if you are ready to make those lifestyle modification bring in that kind of behavioral changes yes um, you know um, that can be optional by 2045 the human genome project you must be knowing that it got opened only in 2003 it's almost like a horoscope right like you know you you have a horoscope that is Im- embedded inside you which can actually tell you your past and your future right once you go through a proper lifestyle modification based on this kind of data Uh, a person's not just reversing diseases a person's energy levels his productivity level cognitive capabilities all can be enhanced hello and welcome to another episode of our own devices uh, again uh, this time we went Uh, to talk about something very interesting and something i can confess i have no idea about and 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 that is why i thought it is very interesting we should talk about it and to talk about this very interesting concept of biohacking we have with us sajeev nayar who is the founder and chairman of of wayroots wellness solutions uh, sajeev welcome to the show thank you thank you thank you nandu gobal so so sajeev can we start with a very simple question what is biohacking in a simple simple uh, uh, answer i would rather say that you know hacking your own biology mm-hmm. so um you know we we have been talking about uh, preventive health wellness you know well being and all those kinds of things in fact most of this is all about uh, taking charge of your own health mm-hmm. and i'm not talking about self medication yeah. i'm talking about uh, uh, you know taking those steps by which i can actually have full control on my own health yeah so i believe that when you lose control on your health that's the time you need to go and uh, you know you need to surrender to a doctor yeah so biohacking is uh, is uh, basically empowering people or rather people getting empowered to take charge of their own health and well being mm. and the only difference between a wellness or well being and a biohacking space is that it's more of a quantified self in the sense yeah. that you know right now we are bombarded we, we have a lot of data so interpreting understanding the data and uh, helping myself to um you know maintain good health with specific goals like some people wanted to live longer stay younger some people wanted to perform at peak levels so whatever is their goal based on that which way you're going to uh you know uh, hack your own biology i've been a diabetic for many years uh, you know and i have also been one of the early adopters of smart devices and maybe i've been using for about 10 12 years from the first pebble watch which i'm sure most people don't even know about anymore you know mm. uh, to the latest apple watches you know i've been using them for long and i understand the concept of a quantified self as a diabetic where i know that if i walk these many steps or if i'm active for these many minutes i can actually keep my sugar level you know below a certain level so but but i'm sure you are talking about something even more as a concept which is bigger you know it has more impact it is not just about smart device uh, it's not just about smart devices right because i know smart device is also part of this but if you could explain the various interventions you have yeah it, it, it all starts you know as you know uh, the 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 word hack has come into play only because understanding the code yeah. that's the most important thing so <clears throat> uh whatever you get from a wearable or a smart ring or a you know smart watch is basic data yeah but uh, how about understanding your code so it starts from your genetic code basically we are, we are human being as a machine if you look at it okay. we are run by two codes one is the genetic code second is the metabolic code as you know so once you know the the way we approach uh, biohacking is where we start uh, decoding your dna Mm-hmm. and uh, with the with the specific objectives of understanding the gene variants which can lead uh, to certain uh, lifestyle diseases yeah. you know because any of those lifestyle diseases whether it's whether, whether it is coronary artery disease or alzheimers or parkinsons there are certain gene variants which are actually responsible for it mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't mean that you know if you have that gene variant you will get it but uh you have a higher likely chance of getting it than the common population okay um there are many people who are carrying the gene variant till their death when without getting the gene variant expressed but it is always good if we can if we know that gene variant and then understanding it's it's not enough to just know that you know you have certain risk for certain diseases which can only make things worse for you like you know yeah. you, you you'll be 
more scared. But rather you understand that, okay, I, I'm carrying this gene variant right from my childhood, right from my birth, I'm carrying this gene variant, which can actually lead to coronary artery disease. But by God's grace, till now, it is not expressed or it is not on. The question is that what is going to make it on? Because generally we say that genes are nothing but loaded guns. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it has to be triggered. Something has yeah, to be triggered. Yeah. yeah, there need to be a trigger. So what we try to do is that we, we try to identify the trigger. So for that, we use correlations. Yeah. So the first thing is that one, once we decode these things, we are actually measuring about 275 health conditions, or rather you can say 275 health reports we generate from your yeah. DNA. And also we make people download, our clients download the app. Mm -hmm. And from the app, uh, they go through about 100 uh, different uh, you know metabolic questions. So then our team of doctors, nutritionists, and also geneticists sit together with the support of AI and publish data. We correlate this data. So that means people who are having this particular gene variant, which can lead to coronary artery disease, uh, you know, majority of them may be carrying another gene variant, which may be leading to a higher levels of homocysteine. Yeah. Then we correlate that with the next data that what, what, what kind of trigger which can cause uh, the gene which can which can actually express us higher levels of homocysteine to express. And mm -hmm. then we find that trigger and then we tap the trigger. And to tap the trigger, definitely it is nothing but lifestyle modification. Mm -hmm. But it's highly per super personalized. Yeah. So we uh, give a counseling session, then followed by uh, preparing a complete lifestyle modification program, which includes personalized diet plan, personalized nutrition supplements, personalized fitness plans, you know, every single thing is personalized. And also we attach the client with a coach who can actually handhold for a period of maybe 12 weeks. Why? Because it's all behavioral changes and it's not easy to do. So mm -hmm. this is the step number one. And step number two is that connecting this, once once I understand, I, once I have decoded my data and I understood that the possible triggers or possible health factors on which I'm carrying the higher risk, number one, number two, and these are the triggers and this is the way to block the triggers. Now, all these other parameters like the AI-based tools and the IoT-based tools, which give me the data, which helps me or maybe if I need a support, I will definitely check with my coach, uh, whereby you can actually uh, control that trigger throughout your life, mm -hmm. which can lead to something like what now the new generation geneticists are saying that by 2045, that will be optional. So, so that, that, that's a level at which we, we can see that happening now yeah. because you have so much of data. If you are ready to make those lifestyle modifications, bring in that kind of behavioral changes, yes, um, you know, um, that can be optional by 2045. So the trigger that you mentioned can also be lifestyle driven, right? So, so it is possible to also give a list of, um, of things a person should not do, you know, or should avoid, which, you know, because you know, with your genes and if you end up with a lifestyle like this this could be a you know deadly combination in a way so so how do you work on that kind of a situation absolutely absolutely see we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis we are seeing now even celebrities in their 40s on the gym floor they're dying yeah. you know so so what why it's happening you know you're getting into now the problem is people are very much wellness caution so they 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 they, they go to a gym or they get into some diet plans without even knowing that whether that diet plan or the, the, the kind of exercise uh, modality, what they are going through is right for them or not. Yeah. It's more of generic. Now, look at this. Um, a person who is having a particular gene variant, which leads to something called QT, you know, uh, we call it as prolonged QT, which is connected to the heart rate. So if, if a person is carrying that kind of a gene variant, and if that person is being put into HAIT, chance of his heart failure is very high. Okay. Uh, same is the case with uh, there are certain genes which are responsible for fat metabolism. And when we have done more than 8,000 cases till now, and we see that a lot of people in India, especially, they have impaired, uh, uh, you know, gene variants, like in the sense which, which are responsible for fat metabolism. So if the gene which is responsible for fat metabolism is impaired, and if you put that person into keto diet, Mm -hmm. Every likely chance that that person may fail, you know, in, in terms of something else, maybe kidney failure yeah. or something else. Yeah. So uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the key factor is that 
it is hyper personalization and another thing what uh, connecting to what you asked is the trigger could be different there is no uh, generalized trigger that's what we see as an experience from our experience now i'll, I'll give you an example most of the people who have got some connection with medical science uh, they know that there is a direct correlation between higher levels of homocysteine and coronary artery disease yeah now the question is that what what makes you know what makes my homocysteine level to uh, always maintain a high level because there is why what why what makes my, that particular gene variant to express in my body that is the trigger now when we look at it we see that in some people it could be they they may be carrying a gene variant which is creating a lower concentration of b9 in their body in some other person it could be a gene variant which is uh, uh, blocking the absorption of b12 in some other person it could be b6 so that level of hyperpersonalization is required if you really wanted to block the trigger you know as we make these kind of advancements in understanding uh, you know the genetic makeup or the code as you said of every person uh, is there a reason why this is not actually being used even more aggressively in our, in our in our ready uh, in our regular medical practice right because as you said you know a person can be recommended a keto diet without you know understanding whether he's you know he has the has the genes to accept it is there a reason why this is you know the study of the genetic makeup of a person is not as widespread as it should be you know because if you meet a doctor a doctor asks you about your family history and it's often yeah. oral and you would say okay your mother had diabetes your yeah. father had diabetes but yeah. a genetic profile of that person is not that hard to do these days yes um you are you are on the dot mainly because of two reasons you are saying that when you consult a doctor doctor will definitely ask you whether your father was diabetic your grandfather was yeah. diabetic um so so when i say that my father was diabetic then the doctor knows that i have a likely chance of becoming diabetic that's all yeah. you know the question is not the real question is what made my father diabetic yeah okay mm-hmm. um common understanding is that you know insulin resistance or maybe his pancreatic level pancreatic function must have been poor yeah but uh, you know i'll tell you one example which uh, uh, which we have come across we took a sample study in kerala alone mm-hmm. uh, you know we took a random sample of 100 people and we did the study and and out of 100 people we found that 83 percentage of them we are carrying a gene variant which can lead to type 2 diabetes yeah yeah and people know that in kerala people are prone for diabetes um and interesting fact is that out of this 83% people 90% of them carry a gene variant which is causing a low absorption levels of magnesium mm-hmm. okay we have even submitted this report to kerala government yeah now we took the sample out of them some people who were willing to go through the process we provided them with magnesium supplement mm-hmm. and we could see their you know some of them had already expressed that means they have got they have already become diabetic and some of them really could see difference in their health standards in terms of they could reduce their insulin levels so that means uh if you ask me why medical science or doctors not recommending it basically because it's a new science the human genome project you must be knowing that it got yeah. opened only in 2003 yeah see i was lucky enough that you know i was making a visit to the us on that point of time i came across nutri genome uh, there is a nutri genome test which is happening in the us and i went through it and i was i was amazed about the kind of personalization which is possible and mind you in 2005 the accuracy levels were very poor mm. so it is purely because of ignorance yeah that's what who has defined uh, the consumer genomics as this is providing people an informed choice mm. you know so you getting you are going to have an informed choice after that whether you follow it or not is a different issue altogether yeah. so i think to answer your question precisely it's mainly because of ignorance mm. number 2 is that if you look at it um, compared to other countries like the developed countries in india yeah. amongst the medical practitioners the, the acceptance is low because they have they are not having the time to understand also because yeah. here a leading doctor is consulting maybe hundreds of people a day mm-hmm. where is the time for them to really sit down and understand this new science so yeah. that's that's the reason yeah 
are you seeing that this is this is going to be you know it, it's almost like a horoscope right like you know you you have a horoscope that is imb embedded inside you which can actually tell you your past and your future right so so um, are you seeing uh, are you seeing conversations happen especially in kerala because you know because you know i think for instance kerala is a little bit medically advanced than the rest of the country and maybe more at par with the rest of the world than than the rest of india is so so are you seeing conversations happen for instance of making this something that you know more and more you know people should go absolutely, through absolutely absolutely we we started in 2019 and just in uh, four years to five years time i can tell you that the level of uh, acceptance have really gone up Mm. because uh, uh the we we ourselves if you look at it the number of clients who who actually go for this program has tripled over the period of uh, four years time okay and also uh, we are seeing uh, big corporates uh, you know that's very interesting big corporates they are understanding the value of it because they all have some uh, corporate well being program mm. so especially um there has been a lot of studies which prove that once you go through a proper lifestyle modification based on this kind of data uh, a person's not just reversing diseases a person's energy levels his productivity level cognitive capabilities all can be enhanced which yeah. is a very big plus for a corporate you know yeah. 10% increase in the productivity for a corporate just imagine on the top management yeah. level can make a big thing for the companies yeah. so we have started um, adoption in corporates especially for the instead of executive health checkup which generally every big company has scored for their executives and above they may be spending about 50 60000 up to 1 lakh uh, in a year for a for a for a senior executive minimum and that is giving you only metabolic information that means if i go for an executive health check today i get the information for the day tomorrow my entire parameters markers will be different yes but here when you go through this kind of a process the advantage is you're going to get an information for the rest of your life and this is once in a lifetime so yes uh, because of ignorance because of uh, lack of awareness yes there is slow down but there is higher level of acceptance and uh, you know that is where companies like that of ours we are looking forward to before we wind up if i can ask you one last question is there an ethical question here uh, you know are people asking if we are trying to change your destiny in a way there are two ways looking at, you can look at it see as i told you in the beginning that genes are only loaded guns it is not that you know you carry a gene variant that doesn't mean that you're going to you carry a gene variant for cancer that doesn't mean that you're going to get cancer you yeah. have a higher likely chance of yeah you know getting that disease so it is the nature and nurture discussion which always have been happening you know which yeah. is whether it's nature or the nurture which is more important and now we are coming to a conclusion that nurture is very very important but yeah. if you know the nature that means if you know what is in store for you and design your environment based on that that can make completely make a difference now uh, coming straight to your question like are you changing your destiny no it is already there in you it is yeah. not that yeah. you are rewriting it it is already yeah. there in you I, we are not asking we are not talking about gene editing and all that's a different yeah. ball game altogether yeah. yeah so this is something which is already there in you and now the science is actually helping you to make that information come out from you yeah. and help you in a way that you can live a longer productive healthier even younger days ahead yeah so so it is more about taking control of your own life right absolutely absolutely and that's where we are we are seeing we are super excited because uh, this information along with more data coming out of the various ai tools and also the iot based devices because yeah. we are also yeah. coming out of the super app next month uh, yeah. we are we are coming out of the smart rings uh, we are coming out of three ai engines which are going to read a lot of information mm -hmm. then once we correlate and integrate this i would rather say that we are we are actually making a, a, any person to become a a quantified self yeah. that that's uh, that's possible sir thanks for being on the show it it is fascinating and i'm sure it's opened up people's minds on a completely new new thing they can do with their own lives right and take control so thanks for being on the show thank you thank you nanda gopal and i appreciate your efforts uh, to make people understand about how their lives can be changed using device and technology yeah So you will listen to Sajeev Nair, and we'll be back again next week with another guest, lot more knowledge and insight. Till then, we are available everywhere you listen to your podcast.